Hello YouTube! So, a lot of times in videos I mentioned political situations in different regions. However, I never, never did a real video outlining the current political situation and relations between the states on all of Tamriel in one video. So, today I'll be trying to outline the general political situation in Tamriel in the year 201 of the 4th era. So, the situation we will most likely see in Elder Scrolls 6 when it comes. So, with that said, let's immediately kick off with the video. So if we see this map, it's highly different from the way we saw it in Oblivion. In Oblivion we saw an all red map, everything was the Empire. Now we see a far more politically fragmented map. So let's start with one of the easy provinces, High Rock. Well, not really easy unfortunately. High Rock is part of the Empire as a province. It consists out of the several kingdoms. And it does not have a high king or any ruling government over the entire province, it's those kingdoms who are all their own sovereign. Each little kingdom there falls under the empire, so if I had to be 100% realistic in this map I would have given all the, all the kingdoms different shades of red to indicate that they are sovereign states within the empire. They fall under the empire as their own little provinces, but the region as a whole is called High Rock. To be honest we don't know a lot about the exact borders of each kingdom by the 4th era or the relations of each kingdom with the empire by the 4th era, which dislike the empire, which like the empire etc. So this map might be highly inaccurate but I think this is the most accurate kind of map we can, we can have. Then for the next province we have Hammerfell. As you see Hammerfell is divided in two political nations, the kingdoms of the crown and the kingdom of the forebears. The borders between the two are highly inaccurate. Uh, we don't know which lands belong to the crowns and which belongs to the forebears, as, two, as the two factions have been in frequent civil war with each other since the last information we had of their third era lands is kind of outdated now. Because in a large part of the fourth era they had a civil war, so might have switched in terms of territory. However, I decided to make this map to just visualize the division. Don't take these borders for granted. So well, we know nothing about their current borders, other than that the city of Hegeith is now still a crown city. With that said, the two factions are right now at peace as far as we know. During the Great War they were still at civil war with each other, but actually became allies to thwart the elvish threat with the Empire. So they had a common enemy, thus they became allies. How strong this alliance is by now, 30 years after the Great War, or how much friction there is between the two, or if there is even a new High King of Hammerfell, we don't know. We literally don't know anything, we, we have no information on it. All we know is that Hammerfell is now an independent province. Whether this means two independent nations, crowns and forebears, we don't know. Whether this means um, one nation, High Rock, under a High King chosen from either the crowns or the forebears, we also don't know. We, all we know is that it's independent and those are the two factions ruling the region. But now we do know that there are two political spheres of influence in Hammerfell. Also we can presume that the independent Hammerfell now has an alliance with the Empire. Most Red Guards had a distaste for the Empire after the Great War, because the Empire basically in their feeling left them but didn't really do that. It's, it's a complicated situation. But presumably 30 years later these differences have been set aside, because Hammerfell and the Empire are both human nations and have to unite against the common enemy, the Altmeri Dominion. If you think it's uh, maybe a bit far-fetched what I say here, or I'll say it too fast, please watch this video. In this video I line out my reasons why I think there is an alliance uh, on Hammer in the, in the Hammerfell situation. Watch that if you want to know more about Hammerfell, as it gives a lot of insight and there you will actually get why I say that there's probably an alliance, but I simply have no time to go into it in this video. So we know that Hammerfell's main enemy right now is the Old Mary Dominion. And its presumed main ally is the Empire again. Uh, well, you can watch that video once again. I mean, the Empire is probably its ally in terms of military, trade and all those things. As the Altmeri Dominion is generally hostile against human nations. And f uh, certainly the, the independent nation of Hammerfell, which basically fought them to a standstill. I think the, in some terms the Altmeri Dominion hates... Hammerfell even more than the Empire, but I have no proof for that. 
Next, uh, as some of you might have noticed, there's this small part of Hammerfell in the border region between Skyrim and Hammerfell. This is a mountainous region and it is the location of Orsinium, which is most likely still part of the Empire, as it has, not, has had nothing to do with the Great War. And the Empire saved a lot of the Orcish population during the last sack of Orsinium by the kingdoms of Hyrock and their allies. Plus, a lot of Orcs in Skyrim would like to join the Imperial Legion as they see this as honorable. This leads me to strongly believe that Orsinium is actually part of the Empire still, and thus shares its allies and enemies. But within the Empire it also has its enemies, as, and also outside of it. As I said before, the kingdoms of Hyrock and some allies from them from Hammerfell actually sacked the lost Orsinium. This probably causes for some political friction within the Empire with, with of course the province of Orsinium and, provinces of the, and the kingdoms of Hyrock. But as far as we know the situation is quite stable at this moment. But unfortunately, as I mentioned before on several different topics, we don't have much to go on. So next let's look, uh, let's look at Skyrim. Skyrim is pretty straightforward. For Elder Scrolls 6 it will most likely be part of the Empire or if Bethesda decides against it, it might be an independent nation under the leadership of Ulfric Stormcloak or the Stormcloaks. I did a whole analysis on the outcome of the Civil War in this video and I highly recommend you watch it and, uh, because there I explain why I think uh, Skyrim will be part of the Empire in Elder Scrolls 6. But then again, we don't know it for sure, because it's uh, more of a uh, well, very well-based theory. So, I'll cover both scenarios in this video. If Skyrim is part of the Empire in Elder Scrolls 6, it will of course share the Empire's enemies and allies. If it's independent, however, it will probably ally with the Empire, as you might say, huh, but they had war with the Empire. Yes, over the outlaw of Talos. They don't have, uh, I mean, Ulfric has a general hatred for the Empire because it's weak, but he also knows that he, they are the, uh, the best chance for him also not to be uh, captured by the Dominion. The Empire and independent Skyrim would have a common enemy. It would not be a very warm relationship with the Empire, but it would be one out of necessity. Independent Skyrim, due to Ulfric's racist policies, might have trouble getting along with Morrowind's houses. But I personally do not expect there to be any major conflict between the two, unless any one of them would, well, commit an act of provocation. But none of the factions are really capable of deploying a big attack on the other, and there would be too much of a, there won't be too much of a strategic value for either to attack, as House Redren, pictured in red, is safely guarded by the mountains on the border and would have no reason to attack Skyrim. But with that being said, let's look at Morrowind. This part is quite shaky as we don't have much info on their current political division after the Red Year. I mostly speculated with the Third Era borders and with the new info we have now. First of all we have House Redoran, which we know rebuilt and probably took over House Lalu's holdings on Vardenfell. Thus I speculate that their territory might, uh, might be a now part of House Redoran, the original House Lalu holdings on Vardenfell. Then there's House Telvanni, which I assumed uh, now still owns its own original part of Morrowind. Then there's House Indril, also its original part on the mainland. And then there are the former holdings of House Lalu on the mainland, which probably went to House Sedras, the new house on the Council of Morrowind, which governs the entire province and is now dominated by House Redoran. The Council of Morrowind, of course. Then there's House Dress, which lost a lot of territory in the Argonian invasion we see here. We know that the Argonians kept some land, and this is the swampy part of Morrowind, and it used to belong to the slavers in House Dress. Thus I speculated that this part is now owned by the Argonians. But we don't know much about how much they exactly kept, which, uh, which, country, uh, which lands they kept. This is just a speculation by me, of course. We, don't all, we also don't know much about the, uh, about the present day politics in Morrowind, like which houses get along and which don't. All we know that it is, it is uh, at this point largely independent. According to some sources it is still part of the Empire and according to others it's independent right now. Because of these conflicting accounts uh, of their independency, I decided to put this strip of imperial control at the border, as I assume that these conflicting accounts means that the Empire is still claiming it, hold, it holds control of Morrowind and that there's probably still some imperial influence at the border, but not much. 
Thus I speculate that forts and territory at the border will still be under imperial control, but the rest being largely independent. Maybe the province is still empire in name, but mostly an, autom at an autonomous province like it was before. That they don't care much for the empire and aren't really, well, they don't really mind if the empire says they're part of them as they would get trade benefits. But then again, we don't know much about it, all there are are some conflicting accounts of it. Morrowind doesn't care much for the Empire and is not really threatened by the Dominion, but the big enemy for Morrowind is Blackmarsh, or Argonia, the third and often forgotten big power on Tamriel. Argonia, or Blackmarsh, has expanded a bit since the invasion of Morrowind. It's an independent state, governed by the nationalistic Ancelil party. They have a powerful military force that actually crushed the Oblivion forces during the Oblivion Crisis, and they are assisted by the Hist, their, ma their maker trees. They don't give a crap about either the Empire and the Dominion and are neutral against both parties, not really helping either. They only care about their own land and their own people. Therefore they don't really have any allies on Tamriel and the only enemy they have is Morrowind. Because Morrowind and Blackmarsh have a history of years upon years of Dunmer enslaving Argonians. <laughs> this, pro uh, this presumably also sparked the invasion of Morrowind back in the early 4th era. After this they don't really interfere on Tamriel, I mean they are a major power, then they are not to be forgotten, but they really tend to keep to themselves. Then there's of course Cyrodiil, the heart of the empire, and the governing province of the empire. 30 years after the great war it has well, very well recovered from the war, it has a strong military and is a political heavyweight. On the border with Valenwood and elsewhere they have an immensely powerful imperial legion which is there to counter any attack coming from the Altmeri Dominion. Its allies are all the imperial provinces and presumably Hammerfell. Its main enemy is the Altmeri Dominion and the two kingdoms of, uh, of elsewhere, Anaquina and Palatine, which are the client states of the Dominion. As said before, the Empire, thus Cyrodiil, has a neutral relation with Black Mars at this point and the, the relation with Morrowind and its houses is currently unknown. I mean, again, we have conflicting reports on whether it's still part of the Empire or not. So let's talk about Elsewhere. I did a whole video on Elsewhere, so I recommend watching that if this goes a bit too fast. Elsewhere consists out of two kingdoms, Anaquina and Palatine, which are independent at this point. However, they are politically bound to the Altmeri Dominion, and they are their client states. This means that the Dominion uh, controls much of them, but they are still independent, but their politics and certain foreign policy issues are heavily dominated by the, by the Dominion and its goals. They have a bit more independence as client state than when they are a province, or, an, or even an autonomous province, but for all terms and purposes their decisions are usually influenced by the Altmeri priorities. Their enemies therefore are all the imperial provinces and their allies are the Dominion, uh, the, the Altmeri Dominion provinces. What the relation is between the two kingdoms uh, and how much friction there might be between the two, we don't know. How much influence the Dominion has in each province uh, and or each kingdom, we also don't know. Next let's talk about Valenwood. Valenwood is to the Dominion what High Rock is to the Empire. It's a province, which is part of the sovereign nation called the Altmeri Dominion. Its decisions are made by the Dominion government, thus the Thalmor, and its enemies are the Empire and Hammerfell. Finally, we have the Somerset Isles, which is the governing province of the Dominion. What Cyrodiil is to the Empire, the Somersets are to the Dominion. The Somersets are the most important province for the Thalmor. I actually did a bit on their government uh, and their internal politics in this video, on the Thalmor leader, which talks a bit about Thalmor leadership. Its allies are the Dominion province of Valenwood and, of course, the kingdoms of Anaquina and Palatine, their client states. Its enemies are the Imperial provinces and, well, the potential independent Skyrim and the independent Hammerfell are also their enemies. The Dominion has a strong army and in using a Daedric artifact called the Orb of Vermina it managed to almost destroy the Empire. But the Imperial troops proved stronger when this artifact was taken from them. As you can see this whole story in this video. Right now the Empire and the Dominion and its client states have a lot of troops at the border and are known to be on par with each other in terms of strength. This causes for a cold war like state in which either side is too afraid to attack the other and thus none of them attacks. 
Both the Empire and the Dominion seek an advantage over each other, in a situation that is a bit reminiscent of the arms race during the Cold War, as we can actually see multiple instances of either the Dominion trying to just divert the attention of the Empire away from the border, but also instances of where the Empire and the Dominion are both actively looking for powerful magical artifacts to make, to make sure they are power, more powerful than the others. But with that said, we covered this entire map and the entire political situation of Tamriel. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you did, like the video, subscribe to the channel for more Elder Scrolls lore, uh, lore related content. And of course, if you want to support me in a more personal way, there is my Patreon. On which you can get access to my exclusive soundtrack which was featured in this video. If you really like the soundtrack, you can also visit my composer of the soundtrack. And his, a link to his channel is in the description. He makes all sorts of Elder Scrolls related music and it's awesome. You, you, sh you should visit his channel, really. It, it, his content is better than mine, believe it. If you want personal contact with me, there's my Discord and Instagram in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next lore video. Bye bye.